Hello everyone, today I will be presenting about a very famous surgical procedure performed on day-to-day -day basis. That surgical procedure is known to be vaginal hysterectomy. Before going to the complete description about the vaginal hysterectomy, first I will explain the definition about this procedure. Vaginal hysterectomy is described as the surgical procedure in which both uterus and cervix are removed through an incision in the vagina, which is used to treat certain gynecological conditions. This procedure is suitably performed if the uterus is relatively small, there is no extensive adhesions anticipated, there is no significant adnexal pathology expected and there is some degree of pelvic organ descent is present. The various steps followed for conducting a vaginal hysterectomy are preoperative preparation, anesthesia and patient positioning, vaginal wall incision, posterior entry, anterior peritoneal entry, transection of uterosacral and cardinal, ligaments, uterine artery ligation, ligation of round and uterovarian ligaments and fallopian tube, adnectomy, evaluation of hemostasis, vaginal cuff closure and postoperative care. Now coming to preoperative preparation, in this various blood testing such as CBC, BT, CT, RFT, blood sugar, triple serology and other required testing are conducted. ECG are checked prior and basic radiographic tests such as chest x-ray are seen. Pre-anesthetic checkup and clearance are taken night before surgery. Parts preparation such as giving enema in local area cleansing are done before before surgery. Consent for surgery are taken the patient is kept for overnight fasting, any necessary medication are to be followed as advised and prophylactic antibiotic may be given prior to the surgery. Coming to anesthesia and patient positioning, the patient after having stabilized comfortably at the OT table and necessary vital monitoring done, general or regional anesthesia is administered. And the patient is then kept in dorsal lithotomy position. Afterwards vagina surgical preparation and bladder drain are done and a short overt weighted vaginal speculum along posterior vaginal wall is placed and a right angle or a suitable retractor is placed along anterior vaginal wall. After this step vaginal wall incision are to be conducted. For this incision Leahy thyroid clamp is used to grasp the cervical lips together of small cervix or separate clamps used to grasp for each anterior and posterior lip. To minimize blood loss during dissection a 10 to 15 milliliter of dilute saline solution containing vasopressin, 20 U diluted in 30 100 milliliter saline or 0.5% lidocaine and epinephrine, 1, 2 lakh dilution, may be inject, circumferentially along the incision path. A circumferential incision around the cervix just proximal to the junction between the cervix and the anterior and posterior vaginal wall is made. The incision depth is superficial to cervical stroma. After having achieved the vaginal wall incision comes posterior entry. In this, Leahy thyroid clamp lifted anteriorly to expose posterior vaginal vault. An Alice clamp is placed below the circumcised edge of the posterior vaginal wall. Downward traction on the Alice clamp creates tension across the incision. A curved Mayo scissors cut across the incision to enter the cul-de-sac of Douglas. The posterior peritoneum may be affixed centrally to the posterior vaginal wall incision. The short ovard vaginal speculum is replaced by one with a longer blade, which enters the cul-de-sac. After this the next surgical step is anterior peritoneal entry. In this the anterior vaginal wall is grasped near the circumferential incision in the midline and elevated with an Alice clamp. Apply outward traction on the cervical Leahy thyroid clamp. Fibrous connective tissue bands connecting the bladder and cervix revealed, which is typically 3 cm long. The fibers are incised in the midline with Metzenbaum scissors. Tips are kept close and almost parallel to the cervix as dissection is extended cephalic. The vesicouterine peritoneal fold at the upper border of the cervix is grasped with atraumatic tissue forceps, placed in tension and incised. The index finger guides cervical divan retractor into the opening to elevate the bladder and anterior vaginal wall. The next step is the transection of uterosacral and cardinal ligaments. In this step an outward traction on the Leahy thyroid clamp pulls the supporting uterine ligaments into view. The uterosacral and cardinal ligaments are identified, clamped with a curved Heaney clamp, transected and ligated with zero, gauge delayed absorbable suture. Knot of this pedicle is tied. 
The suture ends up kept long for later identification. Same steps repeated on opposite side. Advancement in cephalic and along each side in parallel to the cervix. Each sequential clamp is placed medial to the prior pedicle to reduce ureteral injury risk. The next step is uterine artery ligation. For this, the uterine artery is identified on one side and clamped with a curved Heaney clamp. The clamp is placed nearly perpendicular to the long axis of the uterus and medial to the prior cardinal ligament pedicle. The tips should firmly abut the uterus to ensure enclosure of entire artery and veins within the clamp. Following pedicle transection, a simple stitch is placed around the clamp and is secured at the clamp heel as the instrument is removed. Uterine arteries are ligated bilaterally. After this, the next step is the ligation of round and uterovarian ligaments and fallopian tube. Progressing cephalad curved Heaney clamps are next placed across the round and uterovarian ligaments and fallopian tube. After transection, a simple stitch of zero gauge delayed absorbable suture is placed proximally around the clamp. After suturing with a transfixing stitch around the clamp distilled to the first stitch and having the knot cinch the Heaney clamp is removed. This transaction is repeated bilaterally. With ovarian preservation, these sutures are cut short after confirming pedicle hemostasis. However, these transfixing suture tails may be kept long for adnectomy to allow gentle traction to bring the adnexa toward the vagina. If the uterus is larger, then the uterovarian ligament and the tube may be difficult to reach in clamp. For this, the uterine corpus may be delivered through the posterior colpotomy incision to better expose these. To deliver the uterus fundus, a tenaculum is placed on the upper posterior uterine wall and it gently pulls the fungus into the vagina. Excessive traction may result in tissue avulsion and bleeding. Morcellation is a procedure performed in cases if uterine fundus is too large to deliver and uterine debunking is required prior to ligation of the corneal attachments. This is performed only after both uterine artery pedicles have been secured. The next surgical steps performed is adnectomy. For this, the adnexa is grasped with a babcock clamp and gently pulled inferiorly and toward the contralateral side of the incision. A right angle retractor is positioned deep into the incision for vaginal side wall retraction. This is coupled with upward traction from the originally placed anterior wall retractor. A curved Heaney clamp is placed around the IP ligament and its blades cover the entire pedicle width. The entire ovary lies distal to the clamp. The IP ligament is clamped and transected. A free tie of zero, gauge delayed absorbable suture is placed around the Heaney clamp. A transfixing stitch is then placed around the same clamp but distilled to the first free tie. As the knot is cinched, the Heaney clamp is removed. Suture is cut after ensuring hemostasis. Similarly done on opposite side. After this step and after removal of the uterus, the surgical pedicles are inspected for bleeding. Electrosurgical coagulation or figure of eight sutures will typically control bleeding from discrete points. If indicated or preferred a mic called caldoplasty may be performed. Finally, the vaginal cuff closure are done, and in this surgical step, the anterior and posterior vaginal walls are reapproximated by a horizontal suture line with interrupted or continuous running stitches of zero, gauge delayed absorbable materials. If short vaginal length is a concern, walls can be closed by a vertical suture lines. To help prevent later vaginal apex prolapse, the uterosacral ligament pedicles are incorporated within the cuff closure. For this, the interrupted or continuous running closure suture is initially passed through the full thickness of anterior vaginal wall, through the ligament, through the posterior peritoneum and finally through the posterior vaginal wall on one side. This is repeated on the other side. Suturing then progresses from each side to the midline, or a simple running suture may close the entire cuff line. The posterior peritoneum is incorporated with the closure to minimize risks of bleeding and cuff hematoma. After having completed these steps successfully, the postoperative care are done as for other gynecological operations. Compared with abdominal hysterectomy, vaginal hysterectomy typically have faster return of normal bowel function, fast recovery, easier ambulation, decreased analgesia requirements, less cost and less postoperative pain and reduced hospital stay. Diet and most activities are advanced quickly. Intercourse is delayed for six weeks to permit vaginal cuff healing. 
Thanks for watching and stay connected to Artsmoo for more informational and valuable updates. Signing out now, goodbye.